Say a lot of oddness, number one boss bitch, need no elk, cause you know that. Like, I feel like it's our duty yeah. to protect them. Because time because Black, white, anything. I just like yeah, that, that, it doesn't matter. Child, 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 child
as a black person that makes it harder as a woman it makes it harder and then if you ain't got millions in the bank that makes it harder to be relevant in society it's true the government just want to know how much you're paying towards the taxes council taxes yeah that's real but um yeah i agree but overall like we're relevant to each other we're relevant to our family to our business kids, yeah our business, like to to the people that we help and support in the industry and out of the industry, so yeah. <laughs> so much about the youth? Do you want to start? Because I know how it was for me. Growing up was not easy. Growing up on these estates and stuff, for whatever reason, our parents had to make that choice. It weren't pretty. And I um, that's my main fear, in it is, for the kids yeah. to be growing up on an estate, doing and things that we had to had do. Had to do just to survive. And we had our mum at home. That's crazy. Yeah, mum had to go work. Mum was at work. Mum was at uni. Mum had, to, she had, mom to had you. Yeah, then it was that. Mm, no time for yeah. me. I feel like the, the youth is important because they're the future. And unless we want our future society to just keep going downhill, mm. we have to help and support them and guide them. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually our duty as Olders, it could be a stranger. If I see a child doing something, if they need help, like I feel like it's our duty to yeah. protect them. Black, white, anything. I was just about yeah, to say, like, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. The child is a child. The youth is the youth. The youth is the youth. Innocent. And now, obviously, when I was growing up, I had there were white girls living in my state. There were Indians living in my state. But now there's so many more. Yes, yeah, like diverse. it's so yeah, so much more diverse, and there's so. It, so many people suffering now, even mm -hmm. people that aren't on the estates. We're in a whole cost of living crisis. Trust me. And I know it's hard for parents. And as as you said, we went through it. When it's hard for parents, it becomes hard for the kids. kids even yeah. if the parents don't say anything to them, right. you get less money for school. You still have to eat. You <laughs> get. <laughs> you get. Yeah. You know, it's little things like that, and we don't want kids to be out there like stealing and doing silly things. Just because because like, they have they have to or they're bored or they're bored. If you're bored, put yourself into a talent. That's what the underdog stage is for. Mm. What's your talent? Master it. Mm. But then, if you don't have that person, like I had my Kyles, Susans who mm. helped me through. If I didn't have them, I don't think I'd be, be where I yeah. am. I wouldn't even have this where I am now. No, literally, it's true. Yeah. So I think it's really important. It's our job. That's why we do it. Cause it feels right as well. Check. They stuff me in a can like I'm cheap peas. Oh. Had me feeling like a dead man. Six feet. Yeah. Should have learned the You see so much being played out in the lyrics of these drill and rhyme artists. I want to think about the struggle. What creates the lyrics? Life. The struggle. You literally. If it was a bed of roses, that's what they'll be talking about. No. But it's not an even though I know a lot of people listen to drill songs and it's like you're inciting violence or you're telling kids to sell drugs. Like, they're not, they're just talking about their life. Unfortunately, this is what they have to do to feed their kids or to help their mum pay the bills. Or to get that, some of them, in, in it, some of the men that will be in the studio, like it's therapy to them. If they can't get to get in that studio mm -hmm. and spit that talk. Mm -hmm. And get it out. Yeah, it's like therapy for them, so. And a lot of these guys are just depressed, you know. Scared. They're scared. Everyone's out there inciting violence and you're making kick butt. I know kids that they've been stabbed and now they, they're scared to leave the house without, without a knife. knife. Yeah. It's deep because we've seen it. I've mm -hmm. seen my friends cry mm -hmm. from losing friends. I've seen my friends, you know, not living nowhere. It's all been a madness. 
Exactly. If they're say, if you're saying that that's their outlet, that they can say what they need to say, I just don't think the be all and end all is that they're inciting violence on the youths. So like, yes, it's man. more than that, it's and we have to listen, man. Some people write in a secret diary. They they write lyrics. They write lyrics. Exactly. That's exactly it. Some people go therapy. They write lyrics. lyrics. People tend to talk about, when it comes to rap music, everyone says it's their truth. You know, everyone, you're rapping about this. So some kid who's on the street, who's, who's talk, singing about how, or rapping about the fact that, you know, he got stabbed and this happened, an altercation caused this, and he's, he's, he's reliving that experience, he's putting it out. That's what he puts in his lyrics. So Eminem put some crazy stuff in his lyrics because that was history. He was confused about his situation, his relationships, his, his relationship with his children, all that kind of stuff. So what is your truth? Traces I've made is my truth. That's the rule, yeah. Because it's the choices that make you, you are good or bad. Mm. So, what, so what are the choices? What are these choices? What choices so did you make? I've made a lot of bad decisions. So in my teens, I went to jail when I was first 16. Four years, did two years, two, four did two. And then from there, for me, it was like, I never done a year on roll to say 013. Mm. That's from 05. Do you know what I mean? So I've done a lot of time in jail. So, yeah, and that's just bad decisions, making bad choices. Do you know what I mean? How do you feel you can, how have you been able to change that? By just making better choices. Like, we're not, we weren't brought up dumb. My mum never raised me stupid, do you know what I mean? So it was just making better choices, staying away from things that, yeah, ain't really for me. And I'm a person that, like, if my friend's in something, I was that sort of person that I'm in there. Like, I'm, I'm taking it on. Do you know what I mean? I've still got that little nature in me to this day, but it's just learning how to control myself more. Do you know what I mean? The battle against myself, really. Literally. How important are events like the underdog stage? They're important because it helps the community get together, brings out the youth, something for the youth to engage in, and yeah, like show show people talents. Do you know what I mean? People that are from less fortunate places, you know, show their talents. Because they're not not everyone has the opportunity to do so as well. So the underdog stage is about giving people the opportunity to showcase their talents, get engaged, um, socialise, network, meet different people. Yeah, and just be a part of something. Should there be more events like this, do you think? Yeah, there should be. Because I remember when I was growing up, especially in like Roehampton, Rumsworth Borough, there were a lot of youth clubs. So there was like a lot of like talent shows and things like that that used to go on. And now, everything, there's none of that hasn't been going on for years. Hasn't been going on for years, so it'd be good to like, underdog stages, like bringing back that sort of vibe, something for people to come out to. Would you ever have considered any other style of music should your life have been different? Oh, that's a good question, you know. Um, maybe. But I've always loved hip hop growing up. I'm not gonna lie, I've always loved it. Like, always. It's just been my thing. So, from the age of. From when I could watch cable. You know what I mean? Mm. I used to watch all of them Eminem, Dr. Dre's, Ice Cube, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I've always had a feel for hip hop. Always tried to write my first bar probably when I was like 12, 13 years old. Grime days. Yeah. So what about instruments? Did you ever think about whatever playing an instrument? Um I played the keyboard, you know, in primary school. Yeah, I was alright on the keyboard. Played a little assembly. <laughs> I was alright on the keyboard. Um any other my dad's a drummer. So yeah, if I was if I was to play anything else, it'd probably be the drums. So what did your dad say in terms of uh, playing the drums? Did he, does, when he looks at you doing rap music, does he think, you know, why can't you play an instrument? Um, 
Yeah, he's kind of supportive still, because me and my brothers, we all were all into music. Sisters, one of my sisters I know, all into music, all got like that musical background, all tried to, we all got some form of experience in the studio. So, yeah, I guess we just take take that side of him. Mm. Yeah. So why, why is music so important to you, though? Music is the way for me to express, to be honest. Yeah. It's a way for me to express, a way for me to let out certain emotions and, yeah, create. When I first heard your music, I, you know, I heard all his lyrics, uh, synonymous with what mom would call gangsterism and whatever else. But it, the vibe of it was in, the vibe, the, the the quality of it, the. Yeah, I couldn't fault it. I couldn't fault the quality and the, the talent that I was hearing in that music. Yeah. Um, what actually drives you to to create that music? You talked about your your experiences. You've been in prison and everything else. But what is the actual thing that's making you want to? Is it is, what? I don't want to give it, put the words in your mouth. But yeah. what is the actual thing that's actually that that creating that uh, that need to express? Um, and the talent that that we yeah. witness. Like I said, from a youth, I always loved music. So I've always been like before I was writing bars, I was I'll picture it in my head. Like I'll I'll picture myself performing in front of big crowds. I've had these visuals from my youth though. So it's like it's been an ongoing dream. So I've got to a stage in my life where it's do or die, it's fight or flight, do you know what I mean? Mm. And yeah, I, this is what I love, isn't it? So for me, I just, it's something that's, I don't know, something that I do, I wouldn't say effortlessly, but yeah, it's just something that I like to do. Yeah, your song Gangsterism celebrates something that most people are frightened of. Why would you write a song that glorifies violence? I don't glorify violence. I'm talking about a life that I've lived and I've actually lived that life, so. Yeah, I'm just talking from my pers I wouldn't say perspective, but it's not my perspective of life. But I've had that. I'm talking from a perception that I once had, um, a way of living that I once led. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's where I'm coming from. So I I, I don't talk it to glorify it. I talk it because this is how it is. This is how it is for me. This is my reality. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Can you imagine then uh, maybe uh, singing about or rapping about? The life that you could have. Yeah, of course. Have you done that before? Of course. Have I written about the life that I could have? I think I feel like I've put things in bars, but I'm more spit about just things that man's been through. So it's not. It's it sounds negative. Yeah. It's more authentic to me. Mm, mm. It's talking about things that I may have been through or things that I've seen. But when you but when you but when you uh, do that, do you actually think? Okay, what if someone actually wants to live my life? Do you ever think about that sometimes? Yeah, if someone wants to live my life, I'll always tell them, I'll always guide them away from it still. Because like I said, I'm doing music. So that lifestyle that we're talking about in, in the music hasn't done me no good. Because if you listen to the pain, then you know it hasn't done me no good. They stuff me in a can like I'm cheap peas. Had me feeling like a dead man, six feet. Should've learned the first time that I was in deep. You know when man play dirty, but the skin clean. Fuck how this shit seem, I know how this shit be. I know. The fucking name you ever been a number. I still remember now, like I want a bummer. You know, cause and effect. Every cause has effects. The place really gets to me, overdrive on the head. Don't wanna
the slap through again. Give me the yes to her majesty like I'm walking with the dead. Uh, OD was never talking to the feds. Dumb birds that could grieve, but it cracking with many seeds. Twos on the threes, uh, exercise on the free. Flow from the yard inside, they saw a piece. No PG tits, but I could give you the tea. One B for freedom, freedom to the world. Two B for mental, and only wish you well. Three for the ones that keep us going when in jail, might not show it. But I swear appreciation is felt, I said One B for freedom, uh, freedom to the world yeah. Three B for mental, yeah. and only wish you well uh, Three for the ones that keep us going when in jail Might not show it, but I swear appreciation is felt yeah. They were screaming 3G like the network Check what, like my yardy friend it gets worse uh, Get them down with no nicking, I was the expert yeah. Get caught, it was block time or an expert no. On the visit she wanna feel me, I let her no. Back in my cell, we're reminiscing, I let her yeah. Ghosting her cause one brother just had to get work They wanna kill me but I know I got a next verse You know, noodles and mackerel days it gets jerked Kettle chefs, me and certain jelly took turns It gets Betty run up on him for his techie That's man jelly when they see me in their celly uh, On the wing man hardy, no Eddie You know the vibe, ain't no time for moving hezzy Too messy cowboy like Jesse Tyson with a fury So solid could have been even bigger if not for the violence that followed them at events. Mm. Are gang beefs a problem at events these days? You can't control what someone else is about to do. You can't control how a person feels in a time, mm. even if there is something like a big show going on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be haters too. But how do we? Yeah. How do we change that? Do you think? Is there any way of changing that? Like, right, for instance, we do a show tomorrow. All these people turn up. If everyone comes with good energy and good vibes, then when that when the negative does come, then maybe the majority that are the positive will be able to Do you know what I mean? Like there's ways to Yeah, of course, deal of course. With there's other ways to do with things than violence. What do you feel let me say, what do you feel when you hear those kind of lyrics in the music of the youth? I feel hurt for them. I feel hurt for them. Because for them, they're in a war zone, like some of them, like this one's beefing this, it's literally war. They might for them. And survival tactics. What do you mean it's war for us as well? You get hit by one of them stray bullets, your one is dead. Sorry to no, say. That is true. Yeah, like it's, it's a ricochet onto everybody in the end. It is. But obviously when I hear it, especially when they're young, yeah. When I hear like, young kids at like, 14, 15 spinning oh, bars like, oh, when I lost this guy, I'm like, yeah. hold on. You guys are still in school. And it hurts. Like, I'm an empath. I feel it right in my gut. <laughs> you do. You hit, even though we've lived it, we've seen it. Okay, cool. Not as much as they have. You genuinely hear the lyrics and you genuinely feel a bit, it, it's a bit down here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just because we lived it doesn't mean we want other people. Wait, that's what it is. Just the thought of these youths going, no, it just, it, it hurts. And they turn their pain into a whole vibe. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> the songs be vibey and I like them, but... <laughs> It yeah. is deep. It's deep. It's <laughs> like, it's, a, it's almost like a catch-22. It, it really is. And look how many, how many people actually make it from making music. You've got the select few that make it, change their lives, lyrics change. But most of them are still out here on the road. Are still out here. That nigga wanna see me naked First gotta put that nigga through the paces And if you chat shit, then it's time to make changes They know the names, but never know the faces Why do you use the N-word? I feel like... People use the N-word because it's been re... Why do you? <laughs> because... I, I feel like, as black people, we've re-owned that word mm it doesn't necessarily mean what it meant all those years ago. Mm. And, yeah, we, we, we own it now, it's different. It's just like how women use the B word and, and that's my B, like, yeah. I still, I don't like that. I like nigger more than that bitch thing, yeah. I swear. But only because, I feel like I used to do it because obviously, around my peers, it was the norm. And then we hear the norm, you start doing the norm. But when I looked at why people say nigger from back in the day, that re-owning of it, then for me it was like, 
Okay, cool. I'm down. But then it's like, ooh, but my child now. Yeah, now. Yeah. It's different. We got called niggas on the way to school. The first time she ever heard that word. Yeah, man in a white van. And we was like, oh, you're driving too fast. Oh, fuck off, you niggas. CC yes, was like, what is what nigger mean? Saying. That and now that's it's too yeah. much. Like, and now I'm trying to tell her, okay, but we can say it, but then, I'm not saying that. Mm. You can't say it. And so. now we're putting on the drill songs that in in the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because it's different because we understand it, but around the kids. And I'm sorry, no white man can call me a nigger. It's not happening. Yeah, but and then but it's deep though because why should a black person be able to call me a nigger? Because I'm not a nigger. I'm not what they said nigger is. I'm not that. But isn't it better to just remove the word? At a time, I did think that. At a time, but the way that it is now, how deep it is, I think the reowning of it. Yeah, I feel like there was a time when I did. I none of my friends could say it. Black, white, chat, none of them could say it. But someone sat me down and explained, no, like, I'm, I'm owning it. It used to mean this, but now it means this. To an extent, it should be removed because I don't want my you using it. That's just it. Yeah. Because it still takes you back It to still history. takes yeah. you back. You still have to explain to them and then how, how yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a lot. It's an awful word. It is. But the thing is, some people do actually behave like niggas. Yeah, they do. Right. That's another thing. So, and you know, I, you know what I mean, I think about just being wasteful, not recognising, you know, right. what they have and what they mm -hmm. can achieve. Just being you. I think when a black man's wasteful of, of the blessings that he has, you know, he's just behaving like a nigger. Yeah. Yeah. And that is true. And that ain't me. So <laughs> that is, no, but that is true. That's what, how my dad says it. Right. He says, I'm not a nigger, but he'll say, like, you know, the man in square, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Is there any solid basis around the stereotypes? Black people lazy, black people aggressive. Yeah, kind of. Black people were treated away for a very long time. That has literally had an effect. It's in our DNA, like, as we have more mm -hmm. black children, that trauma that our past generations had. That, so to an extent, yes. But I think it's such a cop-out. A black person speaks louder than most people. Yeah. We've got more vibes. I just don't like when they say, minute any loudness, oh, you're aggressive. No, that's wrong. And they play on the aggressive thing a lot. I, I don't care. In the primary school, and a teacher called a seven-year-old aggressive. Like, it's too loud. Like, well, like, he's seven. So I, I, I can see where they say it, because sometimes I feel like I might come across a bit aggressive, even though that might not be my intention. Mm. But genetically, we're all different. Every every culture, let's say like Asians have their ways, mm -hmm. black people have, have their, their ways, ways. Yeah. white people have their ways, good and bad. So I just think it's a cop out to just call black people when they get angry or it's, it's, it's aggression. aggression. And lazy, that is a lie. Sorry, we worked so hard. We worked for how many years for free? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really and, hard. And some people are still feeling real bitter about that. Like, come on, they can't move on from it. Trauma, it's like telling someone, a person who got abused or something, oh, just move on, oh, just stop, come on. Yeah. It's through our generation, so. And if we are lazy, we deserve the rest. Sorry, I don't even know how that sounds. No, I believe also sometimes that some of us are using that lazy shit to really just like get up and do something. Mm -hmm. like, there's a balance, man. Very. There's a balance. Oh, they've done this to black people. They've done it. Okay, cool. But this is a time now where we can really get something done. And bring, and bring ourselves yeah. back. You've got to lose that lazy moniker. Yeah. yeah. One other thing as well, you know, is that basically what I see is have you ever been to like these private schools and seen how you got like all these private school kids, for example, like some of the local independent schools, they're black. Mm. They tend to behave in the same street gang way, even though they go to private schools, mm -hmm. their parents are privileged, they're very wealthy, their dad's right. maybe famous footballers, all that stuff. Right. But they behave like street gang kids. How right. do you feel how do you feel about that? I, it comes back to the same trauma thing. Mm. Like it's the trauma of what's happened to us hundreds of years ago has it been addressed which is why you've got kids in an up-class society or middle-class still acting aggressive or ghetto because what they're calling ghetto and aggressive is just passion that's in us. And then you get told something, then it becomes aggression. Mm -hmm. See it as passion, see it as something creative and see what results you actually get out of us. I'm telling you. Also, 
I know that they might wanna, they might feel like they have to live up to the stereotype as oh, the only black person yeah, in the school. So yeah. you have to. But what live if they're up to not the only black? What if there's, a, what if there's a, a, almost like a majority of black kids in that school? They're gonna. I don't know, but what I know is. I've, sorry. No, go on, go on. I found that when you go to schools with loads of black, they tend to be, no, not normal, but like just behave. All right, there's normal, their little arguments, but the same thing that you would find in any culture, like or any color. You would find that. I feel like when kids feel like they have to show off, they go that extra. No, that's true. But like if I'm in a room with 500 people and there's 10 black people, I'm finding them. Yeah. I'm finding them. Yeah. And we will hum to each other. I don't know what it is. Like if I get on a coach and there's a seat, I'm not going to say I'm not going to sit next to a white person. Of course I am. But for some reason, I know that my annoying traits, maybe a black person might be able to get along with a bit more. Like. I might move like that. They get it a bit more, so that's why I would. But ugh. yeah. But back it's to tricky. what you said. I know that if I get on the bus and I'm the only black person, I get off. Do you? Yeah, I feel so uncomfortable. So that might be another reason why they act out. Because I know personally, I feel uncomfortable. Like if I'm, the, I get off. I will pay my one pound fifty. <laughs> oh my God. That is a lot. <laughs> yeah, because you've been through your own thing. You talked about. Like getting ready for your skin color and da, 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 which I did not know. That is deep. Yeah, and racism still runs really deep. Like I'm, mm. I'm only 24, and I went through serious racism in school. So mm. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. And that's when, when I realized that it was the opposite for me. She's my sister. She, she's not. You're not even that dark. But. I always got told I weren't black enough, and, it, and I, that's when you told me about that. I realised it's a form yeah. of racism. What do you mean I'm not black Mum's the one that taught me that. Mum taught Remember me that. Remember after yeah. I had Kemi? Yeah. That's when I realised colorism is real, because I was real. doing it myself. I did. I was like, I want to die, baby. baby. I was she was like, the it's the sun. same. You cannot do that. You get, you know, just stop. <laughs> but yeah, sorry to go off. <laughs> yeah, man. What was the question again? <laughs> Say love the hotness, number one boss bitch, need no help cause you know that I got this Talking shit, then we get to rocking, don't waste time cause time be costing I just believe that there, there's no nothing to relate to. <laughs> Roehampton, for me, is a really deprived place. I'm sure it's one of the oldest or poorest estates. About, uh, it's not much to offer. If you go there, you'll see that the shops and stuff aren't really... It's just almost like a dead feeling. I felt it a lot when I was younger. I just knew I had to get out of there. I just knew. That's just my own personal experience. I'd like to know if anyone had a better experience. I feel like when I lived in Roehampton and Ashburton, those were like my best times. I had like the community sense. The community was nice, Whereas yeah. Whereas now, I don't really feel that. Yeah. Now I'm the adult of the situation. I, and we're not no longer living in Roehampton, so I don't know everyone. It's different. The, the community sense of um, Roehampton was good because that's basically all, not all we had, but it helped. Yeah, everyone knew everyone. Everyone knew everyone. Even now we can go to our neighbours. Yeah. yeah, even now we just went and saw Auntie. Yeah, Auntie Danai. Even growing up with Auntie Rona, Bionic Rona, even though she passed away. Yeah. Like, that sense of community is what built us. People look at the states in a negative sense. You know, the yeah. states are just these kind of factories for criminals. You're saying that basically there was a sense of community there, a sense of togetherness there that made you feel part of something. Yeah, and That's made me it. feel safe. It's made us feel safe. So safe, because I'm not being funny, but when I was 14, I would come home from my friend's party at midnight, walking down the road and just feel safe. Whereas mm. now I don't think I would feel that comfortable walking down my road at that time of night, do you get what I mean? Are you saying that you And I live in a way better area now. You feel less safe being around middle class people than you do amongst people of from work class back or not just say working class and class. I think it's just different because I grew up with all those people. Like I know who lives in that house and who yeah. lives in that house and if I feel unsafe, if I scream I know that all these people live in do you get what I mean? Whereas No, I hear that. For me Oh, so I feel okay. sorry to cut you. I feel safe in an estate because that's how we was raised. That like, 
we're raised. You might even see somebody in a hoodie and a, someone in a hoodie and looking all a bit, you know? Exactly. That wouldn't necessarily scare me because it's what I know, it's what I come from. You may feel a little intimidated. I wouldn't say um, I feel afraid, but a little more intimidated in a middle class area. We ain't come from that, but then again, I know how to conduct myself around middle class people. But in terms of feeling comfortable, at ease, yeah, the estates give me that. Even though it was a bit poverty driven, but they give me that sense of security. It's where we that set, yeah, yeah. The, the, those people nurtured us and brought us up, so. I think it's a balance. I think you should know how to... Um, estate doesn't necessarily mean thugs. It doesn't mean none of that. It doesn't mean that it, it's destruction and it's this. It just means people going through a little thing and they still find that sense of security, unity, loyalty within each other. Mm -hmm. That's what it is as well. Like I feel like growing up in the estate and stuff, there is such a sense of... like Everyone is loyal to each other. And if you're not everyone will tell you that you are wrong tell you yeah <laughs> exactly everyone will tell you what you've done yeah. wrong. yeah auntie rona had the ability to discipline any child on yeah. that whole because do you get what i mean because that was the community and she was like mother to the whole of her family. well when you look at auntie rona she would put on events that help the community same like what we want to do um in terms of um charity and community work she put on stuff down in battersea at the um chopper chopper and holiday monday that's what i'm saying so that was that sense of unity for us as well so what example. about um you know, when you think about the stakes, they're kind of, you know, you're talking about concrete jungles. Mm. And, but the Rampton, you know, itself is very different. You're talking about, you're surrounded by parks, surrounded by wooded areas. You know, did you make good use of the area that was around you? Did you make good use of that? I did not. I wish I did. I wish I did, but I didn't. I, I think I made use of it in the wrong ways, in the, in, in not so you know, in wrong ways. But yeah, we got out there. We did, actually. Orton Club was in Roehampton. I used to roll there all with Bashman crew. I was part of a group well, that's of That's a club. I'm talking about, did you go out into the, did into you go the out park. into the park well, that's areas, what I was just explaining. into Wimbledon, into Richmond, the surrounding areas with, are incredibly beautiful. They are. With the youth club that I was just talking about, yes, we did, because they would encourage things like that. Let's get out. Let's go to um, Richmond Park, go and look at the deers. But alone, on, off my own accord, no. Yeah. No way. I would say, because I went Richmond Park Academy with Sheen when I started. We used to do a lot of stuff in the park, but I only used to do it because it was a part of the school. So we had to. Otherwise and that's what I mean, yeah. Mm. The organisations around would always push us to do better, but no, not by ourselves. When you walk past these huge houses that are surrounding, you know, Rampton, Putney, you've got this incredible big, you know, it's the of worth describing them. They're like little mansions, basically. How does it make you feel? Do you, do you feel that you've missed out on the life or, or do you, are you accepting of the life you had? I've never been a hater. I don't know how people accumulate their, their riches and it could be for whatever. So each and every one to them, well done. And I also know inside me, I've got everything inside me to be able to get that house also. But growing up, it was always apparent. The rich people live there and the poor people live here. It never made me think that I couldn't do that for myself, but it was always known. Also, it was always known that Roehampton was quite um, a racist area, if I can say that. So, I don't know, it was just always that. See, I didn't know Roehampton to be racist. Did but you I'm not? Like a, I'm obviously 10 years after you, so. What did you know it to be? I don't know, like, everyone was black. To me, everyone's just black, and it's like, how could we be racist? From what I know of From Roehampton, saw, it's just yeah. all Harbridge, down bottom, Lennox Estate, like, that, that's what I know of, even though, there were the nice houses. They were always lovely. We used to go trick or treating in those houses. And we, we had do... friends that lived in those yeah. houses as well, so like from completely... school. Yeah. I didn't ever, I never knew uh, Roehampton uh, to be oh, but, a racist uh. area. So the people, 
So the people that basically are kind of trapped in their ends, you literally don't ever get out. How do you, what do you, what's your thoughts to those people? Oh. The world is bigger than Roehampton. Or any They're, estate. Basically. Or any estate. Yeah. But that's something that, because my mum lived in Roehampton and my dad lived in Winstanley Estate, it was, I, I was always around a lot of people where the world didn't, the world wasn't bigger than Wandsworth Borough. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah. And I think growing up, <coughs> I've now, now I've like traveled a bit more, gone on holidays without my parents. Cause even then when I was younger, the world wasn't bigger than Wandsworth and Jamaica. I'd never been anywhere else. Like that was it. Now, now I've, ooh, good boy. Yeah. Now that I've grown up and I, I travel and I do things like that, I've realized that the world is bigger and it broadens your, your mindset. I think if you're stuck to one area, you're never going to allow yourself to grow. So no, of course. My, um, you know how that, that I agree on that, but for people that I see, my heart empathizes for them just to know that you think that this is just life, and that comes back to what I told you. I knew at a very early age, maybe fourteen, I had to get out of Roehampton. Uh-huh. I knew because this um, weren't going to offer me everything to be able to push my potential that I know myself that I can do. And even my little sister, cause she, she said I used to, you say I used to snitch on you all the time. Mm-hmm. But my main fear was that I didn't want her nothing like how I was or to gr- or grow up anything like how I grew up in Rahampton. So yeah, I don't care. That's love though, isn't no, it? I'm that's telling love. you, it's love, call it what you want, but I'm telling you. No, that's love. You, yeah. you said you're, you're trying to guide her. Trust me. Right, yeah, but the obviously right way. as a 16 year old, you didn't, yeah. saying, yeah, well it's 10 o'clock mum, she's walked in late. Yeah man, you're I'm like, sorry. hold on. <laughs> Say love the hotness, number one boss bitch Need no help cause you know that I got this Talking shit then we get to rocking Don't waste time cause time be costing Folks get money on them Check the markets for rents and stocks One sell crow and the other sell rocks Said it can't stop even when the block up Bro call me say you got a bad job I just take my car off the top Stack this money till the money be long Yeah anyway whether right or wrong Love it in pink cause the pink is sexy But own the clothes be cropped Need my help then you know it's gonna cost Can't be broke cause cash is a must Are you gonna let racism or sexism be you And this question is direct to both of you Individually mm. Go on. No way I feel like Sexism and racism can't stop me. That would just be like letting the small percentage of haters out there put you down and stop stop you from succeeding. That would yeah. never ever happen to me. Yeah, no, I believe that. I believe that it's, it's, you know, sexism, let's say in the workplace or something, for example. Oh, Ricardo. Yeah, let's say racism or in the workplace for example put yourself in a lane where those things don't have to affect you man put yourself in a lane i don't believe that some people like to just dwell on what's not happening for them or go somewhere where you can make it happen where there isn't sexism or racism but i do believe that these are issues but for me definitely won't let that affect me or hold me down i also think that these are issues that are just there and everyone's always not i'm not saying that racism is is an excuse but because it's just there we can't use that as an excuse to as to why we don't succeed yeah but racism is a bit more deeper than the sexism thing sorry the racism thing i don't know Hmm, because there's systematic racism there's this all but in terms of how i want to push my life and direct my life i don't feel like we would let that affect us us. yeah it's just unfortunately as a black person, things are just going to be harder than for you. Exactly. Like, that's just, un- it's unfortunate, but it just is. <laughs> okay, and so, sorry to cut you there. Go to Africa, there ain't no racism in there. That, them things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, put yourself in that place you need to be. That was just an example, though, but yeah. Okay, we're driving through Hampton now. So, <laughs> this is your past. We, we can see around <laughs> us, there's loads of estates, you know, people on top of each other. You know, it's been a, there's been an unending change cycle of people from other countries, immigration. You know, so the people that you grew up with probably aren't necessarily here anymore. It's a whole change. You know, people have moved out. There's been all sorts of financial crises that have created, Trust me. you know, division and, and and fear and all sorts of stuff. Mm. But this is your past, right. okay? In many ways, it, there's you know, there's a lot of beauty to it as well. I'm, I'm sure if you come you. in the summer, yeah. yeah, it would look very different. Yeah, it is lovely. But, but 
we know when people are going through a hard time, things change people. Trust me. So, this is your past. So, how do you now see your future? Oh, that's beautiful. I see, especially after growing up here, somewhere like here, for example, I know there's many places like it. I see my future as oh, limitless. Just by getting out of this box and seeing the world limitless even just the little achievements that we've 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 achieved so far in it sis honestly i just feel like the sky's the limit you know this little wall in here man go to the right yep through here ah! <laughs> survive but this, this ain't even it seriously this is just a piece of it wow can we open it yeah 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 check it out check it out i don't even want to rip the it's beautiful isn't it that does it but obviously that's a little gift from the hood rich Appreciate you for rocking with us. The support doesn't go unnoticed. Stay blessed. You stay blessed and rich. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more in the car. I just got to go and get it. So this is obviously wow. support. You know, showing the support. Oh, that is so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. One. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you, Yeah. It's so cool, yeah. Thank so you so much. Obviously, you guys, you know, just get out there and do a great performance today, precious. Thank All right, you, and yeah, just yeah. looking out for the people in the community. Nah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, man, big love from Cluster View and Hoodwich. Cluster View and Hoodwich! As you said, what we've achieved so far, so many. So many people doubted us, and for a moment there, I even doubted us. And we, you I'm not gonna say. lie, <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. For a moment there, I was like, Are we gonna be able to do this? And yeah. we did it. Yeah. And now I know that we're more than capable. As you said, the world is our oyster. Yeah, it is. And also, and this is why I don't wanna knock the estates because they it's the up. autumn clubs, it's the bases, it's the youth club workers, it's the friends when we used to roll up there. There, that was the foundation of making us know that it was bigger than just being in our yard. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So they kind of let us know, rah, what? We can do a dance group, we can do this, we can travel, Honestly, we can go Stonehenge. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, so I don't knock these estates because they were the first people, organisations that did let me know, rah, it can just be bigger than what they're telling us we, we have on these estates. They did, they encouraged us. And it's, the estates are different now because the youth they clubs are, are closed. They are all gone. <laughs> it's more hood. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what you're, saying, what you're saying is basically you cannot do it alone. D no. no, you need that village. You need that village. You need the village. You need mentors, you need people that support you and help guide you. Help exactly. guide you, write advice, like, especially when you're that age and the hormones, no one couldn't tell me nothing. So how do you feel about the fact that there is a, that this club's been shut down, it's derelict? How do you feel about that? Very it's disappointing. Sad. No, I'm sad. It's upsetting. It was one little piece of Roehampton that just brought all the kids together. Mary, with where the family, are you? family, outside family and... Yeah, like... Now where does everyone go? To be honest, it makes me absolutely sad. We used to come here, even with the event that we done the other day, my old dance teacher from here, Jan, you know, he gave us a meeting, he spoke to us. The children can't get the people like Mary, the Jans of the world, to get that little support and help. It's, it's really sad. Where's the kids going? It's sad. You mentioned Mary, so tell us a bit about Mary. You're... Mary, how come I can't remember Mary's last name? But Mary was literally the foundation of this club. She looked out for us. She was a bit strict, but we all knew how to pattern up. She knew all our moms, so we knew we had to act right. But she made sure we had opportunities, places to go, funding and pool tables. And she made sure this place was open all the time for us. Say love the hotness, number one boss bitch Need no help cause you know that I got this Talking shit then we get to rocking Don't waste time cause time be costing Folks get money on them Check the markets for X and stocks One sell crow and the other sell rocks Said he can't stop even when the block up Bro call me say he got a bank job I just take my cut off the top Stack this money till the money be long Get anyway whether right or wrong Love it in pink cause the pink is sexy But own the clothes be cropped Need my help they know it's gonna cost Can't be broke cause cash is a must can't be bank, cause I ain't no dog. Don't compare me to no one bitch, cause they be... So glad we came here, man. Me too, me too.
because it kind of solidifies a lot of the stuff, doesn't it? it? It really does. This bit wasn't even built when I was here, this little court. Man! Not when I was here. Yeah, Maybe yours. Was here, yeah. yeah. This is the bit I remember. We even going through here. Now, even walking in the tuck shop, the office, I can see it all in my head. The stairs, pool table, dance. And then Froggy used to be upstairs on the decks. Nah, hold on. This is a shame. Folks get money on lunch. Check the markets for rents and stocks. One sell crow and the other sell rocks. Send the car stop, even when the block up. Bro, call me, say you got a bank job. I just take my car off the top. Stack this money till the money be long. Yeah, anyway, whether right or wrong. Love it in pink because the pink is sexy. But on the clothes. Yeah, there seems to be no fun in. What, what do you think is behind all this? I think that maybe the government just prioritizes other things over the youth. Yeah, I think that also. I'm not saying that at this club particular, but other times there's been misuse of funds and stuff. I think they just said, you know what, scrap it all. But to be honest, I don't know the right answer. And all I know is they're not here now. Before we used to do fundraising events. Auntie mm -hmm. Ren used to put on all these things. There used to be loads of events here that we used to have to pay like a little three pound to get in or a little two pound yeah. that would help fund it. But I also think it was also, when I think of when I was younger coming here, I'm not saying me specifically, but the guns, the, the, the drugs, the can we say this? Yeah, of course you can. In terms of like young people, guns, drugs, knives, there was no security. It was just uh, two members of staff and a whole load of kids. Mm -hmm. And I've seen many times people get their head bust out here, fights, people from other ends come, come now it's a over, big yeah. deal. It weren't no joke, people were dying like, but yeah. I also think that the security for people's children, the liability of it all was a bit too much. So, along with other stuff probably, but this is sad. But, what I will say is, at least when the madnesses went on here, mm. now there's just madnesses everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's people taking responsibility. If someone gets hurt or dies in here, the people who run this have to, are going to be sued responsible or for responsible. It. And but just at least these, it was, you know? I don't know whether it was better to have it or not then, but I feel like it was. I think it is, there just needs to be new systems. People evolve, children evolve, Pe things change. You have to change your ways, change your mm -hmm. systems to to accommodate a bunch of kids that not one of them's the same. Yeah. Imagine that. Everyone's different. But, yeah. No one can do this by themselves, okay? How do you imagine you can achieve the goals that you set for yourself? Like just what we said right back to the beginning, we need help. We need the help of other people with experience, with um, the knowledge. We need the community's help in terms of it might be authority, just anyone willing to make a difference. Take, support. Take, yeah, go on, sis, sorry. It takes a village to raise a child and the on, underdog stage is our baby and we need a village to help raise it and nourish it and grow it into what it's supposed to be so we can help the, up, the, the young people working with us generation. yeah same like how like we just said there's not no youth clubs and stuff anymore it's a bit different now in the estates and the community so we need the help from other people to back us so that we can then be a voice uh, a help a foundation for other people coming up like how we did Say love the hotness, number one boss bitch Need no help cause you know that I got this Talking shit then we get to rocking Don't waste time cause time be costing yeah, 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 yeah. Folks gets money on lunch Check the markets for rents and stocks One sell crow and the other sell rocks Say they can't stop even when the block up Bro call me say you got a bank job I just take my car off the top Stack this money till the money be long Yeah anyway whether right or wrong Love it in pink cause the pinky's sexy But own the clothes be cropped Need my help then you know it's gonna cost Can't be broke cause cash is a must can't be bang cause I ain't no dog Don't compare me to no one bitch cause they be entries in this log No man talk shit, no man talk smoke Smokey, smokey, smokey Say they whip up them bricks of coke Whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it I love cause they had you on road ha, 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 ha. Ain't got no pee must cook and smoke You know me, it's the weed I talk Then pick up the pen, see the bars I roll yeah. I'm Batman, you're a joker's joke ha. If that man there's talking shit Then I find this guy and I bust her nose Ooh. Have her nose all drippy, drippy Stunt on me all drippy, drippy Please don't get too lippy when I'm trying to do what pretty Do it for the kid if I need a reason Purse is full when the bag in season yeah. He said that my vibe is appealing But I check the car and the wicks on leasing Man while getting the linens Get bill money and spend